Well, I mean, I I think that value value comes in many shapes and forms and sizes, and uh, sometimes we can see the value very obviously in the numbers or the earnings or the stock price of a company. And sometimes we have to dig a little bit. So for example, through most of its history, Amazon either had very little earnings or if you look at the PE ratio for something like Amazon, it might be around 100 or so. And and the the reality is that even if you had bought at that very high multiple, you would have had a spectacular result because Amazon really wasn't trading at 100 times earnings. Basically, what they were doing is they were they were running a very profitable business, but they were taking the cash flows from that business and investing into the future. And those cash flows were being invested in a very high return on equity manner. And so basically, that is in general a superior business model to, let's say, a company like Google, which doesn't appear to be that expensive relative to Amazon, but does not have the same reinvestment engine. So the uh, really the only choice Google is left with is maybe to buy back stock and so on. So basically, value comes in many shapes and forms and sizes. We can we can find some things which are sometimes priced very cheaply from an optical point of view. And as long as the operations are stable and maybe even growing, if you're buying at a very cheap price, the outcome may be good, even if the business is not that great. You know, we were buying buying something at two times earnings, and it should be might be worth ten times earnings, or or so on. And uh, at other times, like Amazon, we could be paying a very high multiple, and have an even better outcome. So, basically, I think the the nature of of investing is that in terms of kind of finding bargains or finding anomalies or finding things that are likely to be places where value hides. One can look at some data points. So, for example, going back to the Amazon example, the first desk that Jeff Bezos had in his office was a converted door. So he took a door, made that the surface of his desk, and just put some stand on it. And he worked on that door desk for a long time. And when Amazon established operations in India, and the guy who came to run Amazon in India, he used to be a shadow for Jeff Bezos for a couple of years. Basically, Jeff Jeff has these shadows who kind of like apprentice learning everything. He made his desk a door also. And it was more symbolic, obviously, because you know Amazon could afford to buy. But I think the symbolism was that it is a company that watches its pennies. And even today at Amazon, Nobody is paid more than a hundred and seventy thousand dollar base salary. So basically, you know, something like below like one and a half crore or so. You know, so the 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 base salary that Amazon are the lowest amongst all its peers. And of course, people go go work there and they stay there for a long time. But Jeff's perspective is that that money should be enough to live on. And then the upside can come from the stock and bonuses and other things. But even cash bonuses are, are low. The main way Amazon compensates is 
through stock through stock option grants but even stock option grants on a company wide basis you know many companies are diluting you know 3% 5% or more of their total shares outstanding every year as a stock based compensation amazon that number has usually been 1 or 2% and uh, jeff bezos himself has never never awarded himself any options so he's typically had a lower salary than even the 170000 he hasn't had a bonus and he hasn't had stock options so when we look at anomalies you see on one side is a company that is really tight about how it spends its cash on the other side we look at their income statement and we see that they have no earnings and the third piece is that we know that many of their businesses are truly exceptional businesses so for example they have a large advertising business the cost of that advertising business approaches zero so the margins on their you know several billion dollars that are taken on advertising could be somewhere between 50 to 90% so it's it's a very profitable business but those that money doesn't show up in the income statement when they do third party logistics there is a third party bookseller and amazon doesn't own the book but it manages the sale process that is a very profitable business for them because they have no inventory and they are providing services and probably the the margins or the return on capital of the, on that business is also very high but again that doesn't show up and of course amazon web services is likely to be spectacularly profitable so we know that so the when you look at the company's financials you can see the revenue of all these businesses and you may even be able to see expenses of some of the businesses but you can definitely see the expenses of the whole company they may not break out expenses by each business but we can do an adjustment on that so we can say okay you know we think that the logistics business maybe has a you know 25% margin for example and we think the cloud business maybe has a 40% margin for example and we think advertising has a 60% or 70% margin and you can run those numbers and you can get to kind of more realistic picture of earnings 